Hi, I'm Kelly Province, the trainer for Solergen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the PV Watts calculator. Just put the pvwatts.nrail.gov in your browser and you'll end up with this screen. To get started, we'll go into the address window up here and input the address of the business or the residence that you would like to uh, get this data for. We're going to go to the uh, governor's mansion just for fun. PV Watts takes you to the nearest uh, data collection data site, um, so the, the solar radiance data that has been collected over um, 30 years is pulled up first. So this is the TMY2, typical, typical meteorological year. If you wanted to change this, and I recommend that you don't, you can scroll down to the map and look at the other data collection sites here. This is our location at the Governor's Mansion and these are the other data collection sites. Number two here is over a 30 year period. Three, uh, these are for 15 year periods. So we do have international uh, selections as well. That they will show up if you pull an international site. So let's leave this uh, at the site that PV Watts picked for us. And click the orange arrow. The first thing you see is uh, system info. It has a 4KW PV system. I don't know if you can see this highlighted in blue. So it's a 4KW PV array. It just does that by default. You can change this, put whatever size you want uh, to look at. If you don't know what size PV system is going to fit on the roof, uh, they have a very handy drawing tool available over in this square. You just click it. And we zoom right on the top of the governor's mansion. We can see right off that we have two potential roofs that should provide us with pretty good energy. Uh, this is uh, south-southwest and this is east-southeast. So this is the better roof of the two, but potentially we could put a uh, PV array on both sides. I'm going to um, push this down a little bit so we can uh, see all of it. If I want to take a look at the tilt, I, I can see the azimuth easy enough, but if I want to see the tilt of the roof, I can shift the view and rotate around the building. Now right now I, I'm starting to get an idea what the tilt of that roof is by looking at this rotation. And as I rotate, I see pretty well that it's somewhere around a 612 to an 812 pitch roof. So I'm going to go back to our overhead view and if I pick a, a 612 I'm going to be somewhere around 26 degree tilt if I pick a 712 it'll be closer to 30 and if it's 812 it'll be closer to 34 degrees so we'll just pick 30 degrees uh, right in the middle of those three and we should be pretty accurate on it if I want to size a PV array in this section the south southwest section I just click these four corners, I stay away from the ridges and the bottom edge of the roof. So this uh, is pretty accurate. It's not compensating for the tilt. Uh, we're just looking at a plane and uh, and of course we it doesn't compensate for the space between the modules and this will not actually be a perfect trapezoid. We'll have a little bit of stepping in here for the modules. So that'll create some loss uh, however we'll get some gain based on the actual plane so an 8.1 is probably pretty close to what you would actually put on that roof if you wanted to and I'm gonna have to scroll down so you can see these other buttons down below right here if I want to redraw this I can click reset and if I wanted to use both roofs let's outline the whole thing Now I have a trapezoid on both sides of the roof. It's, um, I think this is a pretty accurate drawing. We end up with a 20.4 kW uh, PV array up there. I can save that. It immediately goes into our uh, saved data. 
So our PV system now is a slide up a little bit, uh, 20.4 kW. The only thing that I really need to change in order to get this data accurate is the tilt, and we we're going to do a 30, I think. So let's let's change that to 30 degrees, and we're facing south and we're facing east. We're facing southwest a little bit. Um, if we looked at the roof that was facing southwest, we we're probably looking at, or is actually was uh, south southwest. We're probably looking at 200 degrees. If we were looking at the roof that was facing east, uh, east southeast, we're we're not at 90. We're probably about oh, let's say 115. Oops. There we go. It's 115 degrees. So we're looking at two roofs. One is slightly off south, and one is quite a bit off south. So I'm going to compromise between the two of them, and I'm going to go to. 50. So that's that's about southeast, um, almost you know more south than southeast. So that'll average it out pretty well. This is only information you need in order to calculate the sun hours. There's other information we can change here, uh, but I'm not going to do this because there's only one thing that I'm really interested in with this program, and that is the sun hours. So I'm going to click over and take a look at the data. That's it, you're pretty much done. What we're looking for was this column right here. We have the average daily sun hours for each month of the year, and then we have the average daily sun hours for the entire year. So with this we can calculate our performance and you know make return on investment numbers and everything else we need for the system. If it was a battery system, an off-grid system, then we could calculate the amount of energy that we're producing um, to supply all of our loads. We we're calculating it that way. Let's go back though, and and this data right here uh, has been provided to us based on some information that we did not change. I'll slide back over here. Standard. What is this representing? This is the um, click that blue out. This is the module that we're using. The standard module is a monocrystalline or a polycrystalline, uh, you know, silicon module. Most of the time, this is what you'll be using. The conversion efficiency that they're using here is 16%. The uh, loss due to heat uh, during the conversion of energy, they're, they're calculating at 11%. If we were to use a premium mo module, that would drop to about 8 to 8.5%. Eight so the, uh, the premium modules that use layering or a, uh, a tandem connection between a different technology, such as amorphous silicon, reduces the temperature coefficient and of course we lose less energy due to heat with that factor. Thin films such as cadmium telluride, which is unlikely that you'll be using, um, has an even lower temperature coefficient so they're uh, factoring in about five or six percent net loss due to heat. Let's go back to our standard, that's what we're using, and how are we mounting this? Is it fixed open rack? No, that would be pretty much a ground mount. It's fixed roof mount. So this is throwing in, uh, there's about a 2% uh, difference in heat loss factor based on whether it's a ground mount or whether it's a roof mount. Then of course we have the tracking. If you want to do the single axis tracking or dual axis tracking or the back tracking which is basically it flattens itself out to, to stop inner row shading. Uh, if you had multiple ground mounts then you would use that. We don't. We have a roof mount so we're sticking with it. System losses told you right here that we're having uh, we're losing about 11 percent of the energy with the standard module so that's factored into this conversion efficiency they're also factoring in uh, four percent loss of the inverter the inverter conversion efficiency that's that's a pretty good number uh, commercial inverters are higher efficiency you may have actually only two percent loss with some of those but four percent is pretty standard so what is this 14 percent let's take a look we have 2% soiling, 2%, uh, excuse me, 3% shading, mismatch to uh, wiring, this voltage drop, 2%, and then some voltage drop in the connections of 0.5%. Light-induced degradation, that's pretty normal. Uh, it happens with crystalline modules. If it was a thin film, 
Uh, possibly not. But I leave that in. Um, I, I think this is probably a realistic factor. I leave these two in. Mismatch. Uh, if you're using PV optimizers or you're using a microinverter, this is not a factor. This is a roof mount, which will be either microinverters or PV optimizers. So I'm going to put that at zero. Soiling, two percent. That's that's pretty good. Shading. It's kind of hard to say. That's just they just threw that um, like mud on the wall. Um, they just threw that factor in as a safety. If you think you have no shading whatsoever. Put that zero. This drops us down to 9.61. Availability. What is this? Um, it's either the the time that the PV system is operating and not down due to maintenance issues, or the utility being down itself. Since this is an interactive system, it depends on the utility to be up and operating. If um, if it's not, then we have loss of energy. In Georgia, we, we rarely have outages. Uh, it's a pretty competent uh, grid system. 1% would be actually probably more than we have loss of, so I'm going to put 1. So now we drop this down to 7.75. So we've reduced this, um, you know, what is that, uh, 4, 5, 6, you know, look at 6%. So we've taken 6% off that loss. Their net conversion efficiency with everything, this, uh, the heat factor and the inverter, is about 77%. We've pulled it up closer to 80% at this point. So I'm going to save that. That goes into my calculation factor. Um, let's put that back at 30. It has a tendency, when you push these back buttons, it has a tendency to clear some of the data out, so always look for that. Our azimuth, I think this is a good azimuth to take into consideration two different roofs, um, so let's leave that there. Only other thing, since we're going to look at the performance data, let's go ahead and look at the calculations that they're throwing in for um, uh, return on investment. Cost of electricity, this is your rate from the utility. Cost of the system install, $3.30 a watt, this is uh, pretty accurate, so let's leave those. If it was commercial, it would actually be lower than that, but uh, this is classified as residential. We have a rebate from Cobb EMC, so we'll get some of that money there, and we'll also have a federal tax credit of 30%, so we're going to put that factor in. So with those in place, we scroll back up and um, click the orange arrow. Our performance didn't really change because uh, we didn't we didn't change any of that. We left that pretty much the same. We um, our production performance did change because we did change some of those uh, those, those factors as far as um, losses, you know, due to uh, conversion of the energy. So now we scroll down and we take a look. You can also get monthly and hourly data if you want to look at some real details. This is all the input data, our latitude and longitude. And then they have levelized cost of energy that they're providing for you. We're paying 12 cents and they're showing you 11 cents per kilowatt hour is the cost of generating power with the system over a 25 year period. They're also putting in uh, a 10.5% um, what do you call it, discount rate or interest rate uh, over that 25 year period. So that's unlikely that you would pay for a system over 25 years paying that kind of interest on it. So that is an inflated value and that of course causes this uh, to rise. In reality, I would say we're looking at somewhere around seven to eight uh, cents per kilowatt hour is the, is the real cost if you finance this for a shorter period of time such as uh, five to 10 years. Well, that's most everything that uh, PV Watts provides for you. Like I said, I primarily use the sun hour data. That's very accurate for that. And it's a great international model as well. So I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for viewing.